I will be quickly reviewing what we have done and I'll jump into the new uh, topics that we have not finished. So just to remind you, in Vue.js, the application will be made up of components and these components interact with each other. We've seen this uh, discussion. And the concept of a component, what we, a component is made up of a template plus an object associated with the template. So the object has two parts. It has properties to be bind. We can bind it with the template to display data in the, in the template. And it has methods to handle events coming from the template. We've seen all these. This is just to remind you how a template looks like in code. So in the code, you have one file that has three parts. There is the template part, there is the script part, and there is the styling part. You can link the object and the template through binding. One way binding with attributes of elements using column. And there is also two-way binding. But two-way binding makes sense only with input. You can also do uh, event binding. Event binding is basically where you are listening to a particular event. In this case, click. On click, this method will be called. A shortcut to do this is you come to the event, in front of it you add the at and equals to the to the method that will be called when this event happens. So we've seen all of this. We also seen how I can render a list in a template. So here I have this uh, paragraph and this paragraph is conditionally displayed. If this paragraph will only be displayed if this hero's array, the length of this array, is greater than 30. Otherwise, this paragraph will not be displayed. And this is called conditional, conditional rendering. Now, in the script, one of the most important method or functions, it's called data. And this method is the one that supplies all the data to the template. And this method must be called data, and it should return an object. And inside this object, what you do here, you put the data that you want to be to make to make available to the template. You can have a computed properties. What you see here is you have here a section where you can add computed functions. You are defining a property called the result, and this property is a computed one. Basically, it does some computation and returns some value. Makes it available and is a new property called result. You access it as if it is a property. It's not really, although it is written here as a, a function, but when you call it, it is a property. I am binding this input with A, I am binding the second input with B, and then I'm creating a computed property called result. And this computed property takes these two attributes and multiply them. And in the template, I'm simply displaying this, uh, that computed property, which is result. An application is made up of many components. And these components, they need to interact with each other. They need to talk to each other. So in here, we need to start looking at how components can interact with each other. Button counter. Okay, so it is very simple component. It has one button, and it has one data attribute, which is count. And what's going on here is that when this button is clicked, you can do it either this way using V on click, or you can simply put at like this. So when this button is clicked it will take this count and add, add one to it. It will increment it by one. And here, in the text of the button, this count will be, will be displayed. So it will be, first time you will say, you clicked me zero times, and then when you click it, it will be one time, two times, and so on. It will inc inc keep on incrementing. I created a new component, and this component is named button counter. What we really did, we created a new HTML tag that I can use somewhere else. 
So for example, have a look. I have here this home component. What I did here, I went and in the, in the implementation of the components, I went and said, okay, go ahead and import this new component that I created. Remember, it's called the button component. And then I can basically use it as if it is an HTML tag. So you can either use it this way, uh, exactly the same name. You can uh, make this lowercase and this one dash lowercase. So if I go to home here, you can see here I have three, three buttons. And when I click, that count is incremented. So the, the parent passes properties to the child. That's the only way they can communicate. Because these components, as if you remember initially, as we discussed, they are totally independent. They don't interfere with each other. They don't see the inner working of each other. But of course, they still need to communicate. So the communication mechanism is very clear, only two ways. The parent can pass properties to the child and the child can raise events to the parent. This is the only way they can communicate. I have another component called blog post. It's a component. And what this blog post has, it expects, it expects from the parent one, one property called title. So what I do here in, in my component blog post, I come here and create this property called props. You must call it props. You cannot call it something else. And in here, inside this object, you put all, all the properties that you expect from the parent. So here you declare what are the properties that you expect from the parent. And you, if you optionally, you can specify the type. In this case, the title is a string. And then you can make use of it. It's like a, a property. You can make use of it in the template. What I'm doing here, I'm doing here, going here and saying, uh, get this title and display it in a paragraph. This is the one-way communication from the parent to the child. For me to use this component, I have, as, I, as, I, as I explained before, I have to register it. How do I register it? Two steps. Import it and then list it in this components. Then I can make use of it as if it is a tag. So let me make use of it here. I can just keep it simple here. So I can either keep it this way or I can make this lowercase dash post. Okay, what does it expect from, who is the parent now of this post? The home. The home is the parent of blog post. And what does, it, what does this blog post expect as an input? Sorry? Title. Very good. So I can hear, you see here, I can even see it here, the title. I can type here the title. Let's say this is my hello post. <laughs> yeah. I am passing this here uh, in the title. So this, this value will be passed to the component. When, I, when, when the component is loaded, it will get this value and displayed. So let's go back to the home. And you can see here, this is my hello post. Now, this, in, this is now hard code. This is now hard code. But let's suppose, suppose it is coming from an object. So in here, I will, what I will do here, post. And in this post, I will take this value. Instead of hard coding the value, I want to bind it to the post attribute. Remember binding? Where I link uh, element, my HTML elements with data properties. Even though this is a custom, a custom HTML element, I can still do the binding. The way I do the binding with, by putting colon in front of the attributes, equal, I'm binding its title, I'm linking its title property with 
post attribute that I define in my in my object See here. It's back. It, it is displayed nicely. Let me show you one more, more even more sophisticated usage usage of this. Have a look at this. What I have here, I have a blog post, and I have multiple posts. You see here, I have another attribute called posts, and I have multiple of them. One, two, three, three posts. So what I want to do here, for each post, I want to repeat send repeat sending the title uh, to this blog post uh, child component. Here I do this V4, if you remember we just discussed it. This is to look through each post in posts. And then I do bind. I, I can either do here V bind or simply colon bind. So the only way the parent can send information to the child is through this special property called props. Now, if the child wants to communicate to the parent, how they can do so? Emitting by raising an event or by emitting an event. So here is a, an example. So on click, on click, I created here a button. When this button is clicked, I emit an event. The way I, I, emit, I emit an event, there are multiple ways I can do it. I can create a method here. And I can say on, on click, and I can say here this, I can do it this way, on click, and I, I'll just do here on click. Either way, I, either I define it as a function and then call it, or I, because this implementation is super simple, it's one line, I can just copy this and paste it here. It's up to me. At the end of the day, there is a special function called $Emit, and in that function, what you can do is you raise an event. This is the name of the event. And this one is a parameter. I'm raising an event. I say in a large text event, and this is the this is the value by which I want to enlarge the text. Okay, so this is how I raise an event. Now the parent can listen to this event, and they can do react to it, do something about it. The way we listen to event is by using v on, or another way of doing it by simply adding at. On when this event happens, this is what I want to do. What I want to do, I will increase the font by, by v event. What I can do here, I can call a function called on in a large, on in a large text. It's getting this font here and increasing it. Event is whatever is a array. Emit an, when the child emits an event, what are the two parameters you pass to the emits? The name of the event and a value. Could be anything. In this case, it is a simple number. It could be an object, could log post component. It can erase an event. What's the name of the event? In large text. How do I register a method to handle the event? I come to the event. In front of it, I put at equals the name of the event, the name of the method that will handle the event, this communication between the parent and the child. So the parent, do, it passes data to the child through the props, uh, through, uh, through the, uh, what do we call them? Through the properties that the child has declared and the props. And from the child to the parent, the child can erase event to the parent using this special method called at emit. When, you, when the child raises an event to the parent, they can not only specify the name of the event, but also they can specify some data that re get returned back to the parent.